Hi guys, welcome to the workshop. Today, one thing that I want to do is I want to work on an in the hoop embroidery project. I'm new to embroidery, fairly new, about four months I've been doing it. Um, and I've been seeing on Facebook and in different groups and everything that in the hoop sneaker bag, like this right here. Um, been wanting to try it, and so over the weekend, I purchased the pattern from Disorderly Threads on Etsy, and I'll link their shop down below so you can you can look at it and purchase the pattern. I think it was $4.95, and I got the 5 by 7 pattern. But anyway, I purchased it over the weekend and um, did this one yesterday, and for the most part, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I think it turned out really well but we're gonna discuss it later because there are a few things that I found out um, in doing that as the first one. Um, some things I should do, some things I shouldn't do, um, a few things I might do a little bit differently, all within the realms of the pattern and the instructions and everything that it gives you. But what I wanna do is I wanna walk you step by step through making this particular bag. Um, I like to keep all of my patterns and everything pretty organized. So what I did was, or what I have done, is I have a notebook that I keep all of my patterns and things in like that. Uh, here you go, see my little patterns notebook. Um, I've got the majority of things that I have in here are sewing patterns, but um, I purchased this pattern and printed it off my printer was about out of black ink, but printed it and I've got it here in my notebook. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going step by step through all of this and making this bag. Now, um, I, I have watched a video uh, tutorial on YouTube about doing this, but it was done on a bigger, I believe it was probably a 10 or maybe even a 16 needle machine, which I don't have yet. I've got um, a Brother NQ 1600D. I'm real pleased with that machine. But that's what I'm going to be using to do, to do this um, particular bag on. If you have a single needle machine, um, that's fine. We'll, we'll work through it together. If you have a uh, multi-needle machine um, it might be slightly easier for you to do I don't know we'll see but anyway um, we're gonna get started on getting this bag underway okay let's go over the list of supplies that we're gonna need to um, get started and I've got all of mine cut out and laid out here and we're ready to go the outside pieces it are um, Let's see, you're gonna need one nine by three, whoops, nine by three, nine by six, and nine by seven. You're gonna need the same thing for your lining pieces, which I've got cut out here. And then basically the same thing of, of batting, and I'm just using some um, thicker felt that I have for batting instead of just actual batting because uh, the batting that I have is too thick. And then for the applique on the outside, you're gonna need um, a nine by six piece here for the bottom, for the shoe, the actual shoe part, a six by three piece here for the top, and then just a small two by two piece, you'll need that for the uh, circle with the star in the middle. You're going to need at least a 9-inch zipper. The 9-inch is what it calls for in the pattern, but um, in putting in zippers, i found that I just do better if I can get a longer zipper and then I can cut it down. These are the two that I have on hand, and I can't decide which one I'm going to use. I'm probably going to use the light pink instead of the dark pink because I think the dark pink is just a little bit too dark. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Of course, you're going to need your embroidery thread. You're gonna need your hoop. I'm using a six by 10 hoop. That's the largest hoop that'll fit on my machine. Um, and it will do the five by seven bag perfect. Now, the the um, 
pattern pieces are generous in size. Um, one of the things that's recommended is that you pin, pin it in place. You can either pin it or you can tape it either way. That's one of the things that's recommended in the, the um, instructions on the pattern. And that comes in really handy. It works, it works really well. But the patterns are cut generous enough size that you have plenty of room to, to pin and, and not worry about your machine or anything running, you know, running over your pins or anything like that if you pin toward the outside. Okay, we're over at the ironing board now. I've done the first stitch, or the first step rather, which is the first set of stitches. And that is actually your placement stitch for your zipper. And it is like this. It's just the two lines down in here. And what you're gonna do at this point, if I can show you and hold the phone at the same time. I've got a GoPro somewhere here and I think I know where it is, but I'm not positive. Um, but Pops has been making videos too, and he's going to use it, so right now I'm just kind of trying to do this with my phone. Okay, like this, you're going to place it. You want, you want to make sure that your zipper is right there on those two lines. Now, like I said, the pattern calls for a 9-inch zipper, which would be the perfect size for this. You're not going to have a whole lot of play in it, but in my years of sewing, I have, I just always buy longer zippers because you can always shorten a zipper. That's, that's no problem. Um, but if you don't get one that's long enough, you can't lengthen it. So I just always go with the longer zippers. So what you're going to do at this point after you get it down, pardon my dogs, they're being little jerks. Uh, what you're going to do at this point after you've got it down is you're going to tape it in place. Okay, I've got it taped in place. It's right on the placement lines. It, it fits right there in between the placement lines. And I'm just using scotch tape. Since I am using a longer zipper, I do um, tape the ends of it down here on the outside of the hoop. That way, um, that doesn't flop around. Now, one thing that was not said in the instructions that I want to point out to you that... I didn't pay attention to in the first one that I made. When you place your zipper down, make sure, first of all, that the, the zipper pull is on the left, but you want to make sure that your zipper is facing up. See how it's facing up. You want your zipper facing up. Um, and the reason is, if you look at this nice little bag that I did yesterday, look at my zipper. It's not going to focus. Anyway, I did the zipper facing down simply because in a lot of the sewing patterns that I've done in the past, um, you put the zipper face down, always with the zipper pull at the left, because when you're finished with the bag, you turn it right side out. So just as an automatic habit without paying attention or anything like that. I mean, totally my fault. Um, I placed the zipper down. So very important step. Make sure that you have your zipper facing up. Okay. Just like that. Tape it down within these lines. And now what you're going to do after you have it taped down and in place, turn your hoop over like this. And now you're looking at the back of it and see, so you can see the two lines there for your zipper placement. What you're going to do is you're going to take your inside lining piece, you're in here, you're going to flip it over so that the right side is facing the stabilizer. Okay? And you want to line it up with that bottom zipper line. Do you see that? This is the this is this is the part that's going to go in your machine. So this is the bottom placement line. This is the top placement line up here. You're going to lay it down 
and match that up with that bottom placement line. After you've got it lined up, what you're going to do is tape it in place. There again, I'm just using the scotch tape. Scotch tape doesn't hold quite as well as like maybe painter's tape or something, but it still works. Tape it right there. Okay, and from here, I just found where I can zoom my camera out. So from here, you've got your lining placed, uh, your first piece of lining placed down, it's taped in place. You're gonna flip it over. Wait a minute, let me turn it around. So it's this way. And then you're gonna take your medium sized piece of outside fabric. This is the nine by six piece. And you're gonna put it just like you did the lining piece. If you're using a fabric that has a front and a back side, a right and a wrong side, you're gonna wanna do it with the wrong side facing down. The wrong side is gonna be facing to the um, stabilizer. I'm using a solid color and both sides are the same, so it really doesn't matter. But you're gonna line this up just like you did with the um, lining, and then you're gonna tape that in place. Okay, so I've got it down, it's lined up. I've got the, the front side facing down. If you have a, uh, a pattern that has a front and a back, a right and a wrong side, you're gonna have the right side facing down to the stabilizer. I've got the lining on there, got it taped down. We're ready to take it back over to the machine and do the next set of stitches. Okay, and what that's done is that's attached your lower fabric to your zipper. So now we're going to take it off the machine and take it back over here to the ironing board, which is what I use as my workstation. Okay, so we've got the first step done. We've got the, the bottom piece and the lining the larger lining piece attached to the zipper. So now what you're gonna do is take your medium size piece of batting and you're gonna place it right here, right up next to your stitch line. Can you see that? I didn't get all my tape off, but that's okay. It'll be covered up, you won't see it. Put that right up there next to the stitch line. And then you're gonna bring this front piece down over top of it and then just kind of mash it into place kind of put it into place and then you're going to take uh, your pins let's see where's my pins and pin it into place and of course I'm going to have to put the phone down while I do that so hang on just a second okay I've got it pinned in place and like I said these pattern pieces are very generous. Um, if you look, here's my finished product of where I screwed up on the zipper. So if you look, you know, you've got quite a bit of extra room on the side, so don't worry about pinning. That's one thing that kind of freaked me out when I did that first one yesterday. Pin it down. You want to make sure that you've got the fabric pretty taut on here. You don't want to pull it. You don't want to pull too hard, but you want a nice firm crease up here and you want to make sure that it's down good and that, that it's flat and there aren't any wrinkles. Then after you've got that pinned, what you want to do is you want to take the larger applique piece that you've cut out for the, for the actual tennis shoe, the, um, the larger piece and lay it face down, face down, okay? And you're going to place it about a fourth of an inch down below, let me see if I can get in here, down below where you have flipped this over, okay? 
So it's going to be about a quarter of an inch down below the zipper. Tape that into place. You can tape or pin either one. Um, this is a fairly quick step here and a relatively short step. So I'm just going to tape it into place and then take it back to the machine, um, put it back on the machine and complete the next stitch. And then after you have that done, we're going to take it off the machine and back to the workstation for just one second. Okay, so what we just did is made just a little line up here at the top and attached this top applique piece to the bottom of your bag. So now what we're going to do is take this and fold it down, okay? And right up here is where your stitch is. So just kind of crease that in place. Right here is the part that's just that's going to matter the most is right here where it's stitched. Just kind of flatten it out. Make sure you've got no wrinkles and we're going to pin that into place. Okay, I've got that pinned into place. It's down good. I made sure that there's no wrinkles in it. It's pulled taut but not tight. Pardon my dog in the background. Um, She's like my second skin and follows me wherever I go. She thinks she has to supervise everything. Anyway, okay, we've got it pinned down. And now we're going to take it over to the machine and do the outline stitch for the sneaker. Okay, now that we've got the tack down or the outline stitch in place, what we're going to do next is take it off the, the machine. You want to take your hoop off the machine. Do not remove the fabric from the hoop, but you're going to take your, machine, your hoop off the machine. If I can get it. I can't do a lot one-handed. And unpin the top part where you've got that your, your applique fabric tacked down. And then you're going to trim as close to this outline stitch as you can. You don't want to cut into the stitch, but you want to trim it as close as you can to that. Okay, so we've got the shoe applique sewn down. I've trimmed as close to the edge as I, as I can around there. So now we're going to put it back in the machine and do the shoe details. And now that we've got the shoe detail done all down through here, we need to change our thread to whatever color you want for the outline of the circle and the eyelets on the shoes. So after it's done, that placement stitch for the circle, take your fabric that you've picked for your circle. And this one I did a little bit bigger than the size the pattern called for just because it was a scrap that I had. So just kind of place that wherever you want it to go. 
and then do the tack down stitch for that. Okay, so now all you need to do is trim this excess off right here and you want to get it as close to the line of the stitching as you can without cut you, cut, cutting the stitching. Thanks to Pops for recording for me. He just came up from his workshop where he's been building some projects too. And of course I tagged him to come in here and help me with this because I couldn't cut and film at the same time. And there's a few places right here that's sticking out just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna get those as close as I can because if you don't get them close, they're not gonna get caught in the, the final satin stitch that goes around there and it'll just kind of look like a little hairy mess. Get those little snips right there. Okay, and then we're gonna put it back on the machine and do the final stitch around here. Now we're gonna do the star. So we're gonna need another thread change here. And I decided to go with pink. Okay, one more thread change down here. Now we're gonna do the shoelaces. So whatever color you want your shoelaces to be, you need to change to that color. And I'm gonna do mine kind of an off-white color. So let me change that thread. right now. So at this point, we're going to take it off the machine and back over to the workstation for a minute. Okay, back over 
at the ironing board, you've got the whole bottom part stitched out and the whole applique part down there is done. So at this point, what we're wanting to do is we're going to turn it over and the bottom lining that we stitched on it first, we're going to untape that and fold it down. fold it down and pin it in place. Let me add though one thing that you need to do when you're pinning something on the bottom. You need to make sure that you've got it pulled down taut but you're going to pin it on the front side of the hoop. Okay, You don't want any pins to be on the bottom side of your hoop. So in this case what you can do is pin is tape this back in place where it's pulled down where you want it to be like that and then you're going to flip it over and pin it in place here so I've pulled that bottom piece of lining folded it down and pinned it in place here on the front side now we're going to work on the top part. What we're going to do is get the smaller piece of the exterior of the bag. That's going to be the 9 by 3 piece that you cut. And we're going to do it at the top just like we did down here at the bottom. You're going to take this and place it right there going to place it, line it up, and place it right along the edge of the zipper that you stitched down right there. Keep in mind, like with the bottom, if you're using a fabric that has a right or a wrong side, you want the right side facing down toward the, the stabilizer, okay? So you've got the wrong side of the fabric showing up to you. If you're using a solid color like I am, it's not going to matter. They're both the same on each side. Once you get that done, you're going to pin it in place. Okay. After you've done the front, you've taken that small piece and you've put it down and lined it up with the top of the zipper up here, pinned it in place, and then I put a couple of pieces of tape too, just because a little bit of the bulk of the zipper will make that stand up just a little bit. What you're going to do then is turn it over and your small piece of lining that you had that you cut out, you're going to do the very same thing. Let's see. You're going to line it up. You can still see that. I don't know if you can see if it'll focus. And anyway, there's still, there's that stitch there that, uh, where you attach the zipper. So you're going to line this bottom piece, or this piece, excuse me, it's not the bottom, it's the top. The smaller piece of lining up with that zipper line, that zipper stitch right there. Tape that and pin it into place. Okay, that's taped into place. I didn't pin it, um, but it's taped into place. The front is taped into place and pinned into place. And so now we're going to take it back to the machine for the stitch that's going to tack those down. Okay, after you complete that stitch, we're going to take it off the machine and back to the workstation for just a minute. After that stitch down, take the tape off, which I forgot to do before I started the video back. Take the tape off. And then get your smaller piece of batting that you cut. We're going to do it just like we did the bottom. I 
keep forgetting my phone will zoom out. Lay that right up against that stitch and then fold the top back down over top of that batting. Use your fingers just to make a little crease in there and you're going to pin that into place. After you get that pinned into place, you're going to take your top applique piece uh, fabric that you cut out. This is going to be the smaller one. But anyway, you're going to take this face down like we did with the big piece up here and place it up here at the top. where it's about a fourth of an inch. I may have that pinned too close. A fourth of an inch down from the top of this fold. Okay? And then you're going to take that in place. Okay, I've got that taped in place. I moved that pin just to be on the safe side. I've got that taped in place. Still, you've got your bottom lining still folded up. You haven't covered it, you haven't pulled it down yet, so that's still folded up. And then we're gonna take it over to the machine and tack that down. Okay, after that stitch is done, we're gonna take it off the machine. And back over to the workstation, take the tape off, there. and then just like we did with the front part, or the bottom part, fold this down, see there's your, there's your tack down stitch. We're going to fold this down, kind of create a little crease there. And pin that into place. Okay, I've got that all pinned down and now I actually added a piece of tape right here on the end just because the seam ends about right here. And that just lifts up just a little bit, and I just wanted to make sure that it stayed down during the, uh, the stitching process of all of this. So I've got this all folded over and pinned down, and we're going to take it to the machine and do the top detail of this. And after it's done that, you're going to take it off the machine and trim this out like we did the bottom part. Trim it as close to the seam as you can get without cutting the seam. <laughs> Pops is helping me film again. And then you're going to cut this top fabric up here. as close to the seam as you can without cutting the stitches. I've been known to cut the stitches before. This one's a little bit thicker than the bottom one because you folded it over when you stitched it down. So that makes it just a little bit thicker. Oops. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back in and get just these little pieces right here. You wanna try to get it just as close as you can because if you leave too much on there, 
when it stitches out, it's going to sh to uh, ravel and it's going to look hairy. It won't look good. Okay, and then after you do that, you put it back in the machine and finish the top detail. Okay, now we're going to finish this up. What we're going to do um, is, after you bring your bag back over here, you've got all the stitching and everything done here, flip it over, and that top part of, in, of uh, lining that you had that was still folded down, you're going to fold this up, kind of crease it out, flip it back over, and pin it into place. Now, one thing you can do if you want to, it's optional, you don't have to, um, but I'm going to just because I am. Um, you can add loops to this so that you can uh, attach a little strap to it. Um, if you wanna make it a wristlet, you can make um, a longer strap. It, it's up to you if you want to, if you don't want to. All I did was I got, um, just a little piece of ribbon here. It's uh, I cut the ribbon 14 inches long and then uh, cut it in half and then folded it in half. And I've put a pin in here just to hold the loop down. And what you're gonna do is take this and right above the zipper, this is, this is inch wide. It actually calls for half inch, but I didn't have half inch. I'm using inch wide. Um, place your, your loop up here, you want the loop part inside your bag. You want the edge of your loop over here with the raw edges of the bag. Place both of those loops right there where you want them. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin those into place. Okay. I've got my loops pinned in. I took the pins out of the end of the loops. And then just to keep them out of the way when it stitches around the bag, I'm all kind of bring them down just a little bit. Whoops, I just taped myself. Here. Bring them down just a little bit <laughs> and tape them into place. Let me back up just a minute. There's my iron making some noise. Where I taped my um, zipper down up here, this is the point that you want to open your zipper. You definitely want to make sure and do this. You want to make sure and open it, open it about three fourths of the way, or roughly over to. A, I'm just having issues. Over to about the the start of the tennis shoe here, because you're going to have to turn this inside out after after it's stitched. Okay, so I've got my zipper open. I've got my loops taped down okay loops taped down zipper open then you're going to take the back piece that you cut this is the the largest piece and lay it face down here's here's your finished product you're going to lay it face down on top of that and lay it kind of push it down 
After you've done that, take your last piece of batting, or in my case, felt, and lay that down on top of that, just like that. And then it's, it's recommended uh, in the instructions for the pattern uh, to get a piece of tearaway uh, stabilizer and lay down on top of, the, of your batting or your fabric just because sometimes, um, you know, your needle can get tangled up in the, the nap of the, the batting or the, what you call it, felt right there sometimes. So take a piece of tearaway stabilizer and put it right on top of the felt or the batting that you have. Now, let's talk about this. You see this little tear, tore part, torn part on my stabilizer here? I have a 50 pound boxer. That her life's mission is to eat every bit of my stabilizer. And I went outside the other day to help Pops with something. And she came in here and got into my stabilizer. And uh, so, yeah, anyway. Okay, now we're going to pin this down and get ready to stitch it up. Okay, I've got it pinned down. And I put a tape on it just to kind of secure it a little more because this is getting kind of thick here and I just want to make sure it doesn't move. So we're going to take it back to the machine and this time it's going to stitch all the way around the outside of the bag. Okay, now we're going to take it off the machine and take it back to the workstation for one last step. Okay, so now you've got your tack down stitch here where it's stitched all around the front. There. Flip it over. Yeah, my corner got caught in there. But that's okay. I trimmed that out. Uh, that's going to be cut off anyway. Then you're going to take your last piece of lining that you cut and place it on here face down, okay? Again, you've got the printed side is facing down. Pretty side to pretty side. Keep, keep remembering that. Okay, and we're going to tape that in place. Then we're going to go back to the machine and it's going to stitch all the way around, but it's going to leave just a little place down at the bottom for you to turn it. Okay. And that is it. Now, the last thing you have to do You've got it all stitched. Start taking out all your pins. Tear your tearaway stabilizer off. And take all your tape off. We put a ton of pins in this. I'll leave 
That's all of them. Take that of your hoop. And then you're going to trim it. What I did the first time is I trimmed it down just to get rid of a lot of the bulk at first. And then we'll go back in and trim it just a little bit closer. One thing I want to show you, if you used a, a bigger zipper than what, um, what it called for, you know, the, the pattern itself calls for a 9-inch zipper, and I used a... I think it was a 14 or 16 inch zipper and so you've still got it hanging out here well you've opened it up so the inside of the zipper is in over the pull is on the inside so you can get to it and then the end over here you can just cut off that's not going to be a problem at all side note one thing i figured out because like i said i always buy zippers bigger than what i need and then just trim them down because it's easier for me to do. These pieces that you cut off, a lot of times they're good to use in other projects if you need like a little pull tab or a little something like that. Um, a lot of times that just makes a cute little tab. So being the hoarder that I am, I save these and don't throw them away. And then now we're gonna kind of just graduate it a little bit. That is a lot of bulk in there. Okay, when you get to your corners, if you can see, you want to kind of trim your corner here as close to the seam as you can. That's just going to help when you turn it don't cut the seam though because if you cut the seam it's going to all fall apart but you want to cut it close to the corner can you see that like that Okay, now to turn it, and it's kind of stiff, so it's going to be a little kind of working. Here's your lining. Where your lining is, you're going to take this and turn this, turn it through there. And it's stiff with all the stitches and the batting and the stabilizer and everything like that. So It's going to take you a minute to kind of turn it, but you just kind of have to work it a little bit, and it'll turn just fine. And now all you're doing, you're turning the lining out right now, okay? So when you get it turned, you push your corners out. Now, here's where your zipper is. Remember you had the uh, stabilizer over your zipper. So what you're going to do there is 
get a seam ripper. Let's see, just kind of go through there to expose your zipper and then get your small scissors and cut that stabilizer off. You want to try to get it as close to the lining as you can without cutting the lining, but ultimately this is going to be on the inside of the bag, so it's not going to show. So what did you think? Did you think it was that hard to do? Time, kind of time consuming. Uh, according to my machine, um, it takes 43 minutes of actual machine time. And there's 22,558 stitches in all. The one that I did yesterday that I did the zipper wrong um, took me a lot longer. I think this is one of those things that once you get the hang of it and once you do it once, you'll see that it's not... It's uh, it's a lot of steps, but it's not as daunting and it's not as hard to do. Let me know. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I've got this off about as much as I'm going to right now. Okay. Now there's your zipper where you where you um, had that. Go ahead and reach inside. There's the tape from the loops. Go ahead and reach inside and open your zipper the rest of the way. And then now, after you've got the zipper open the rest of the way, I'm going to finish turning it. And it's like any other sewing project or anything like that. When you turn it inside out, you just kind of have to work it a little bit. Whoops. When you get it, reach down in there and push the corners out. <laughs> Make sure they're nice and rounded. And up here, Whip it out. There's your little loops. They may be a little bit long. I don't know. Yeah, I think they are. Maybe we could do them a little bit shorter next time. But anyway, there you go. There it is. How did yours turn out? Did yours turn out good? Last thing, let me tell you, too. Um, where we turned it, the uh, lining down here, just kind of push it back out. There's still a hole from where you turned it. You can take um, either a needle and thread and stitch it up so that that hole is not there and you'll want to you'll want to close it up somehow because if you don't, um, whatever you put in here is going to fall down in between the lining and the bag itself. But you'll want to go ahead and stitch that up. Uh, you can use needle and thread and do it. Uh, you can get uh, fabric glue and glue it. That would work. Um, you want something that's going to be pretty pretty sturdy, though, that, that's going to stay, uh, stay fastened. So, anyway, after you do that, flip it back. Get those corners back out. And there it is. All finished. I sewed up the bottom where, uh, where the lining was, where we turned it through. Uh, I went back in and sewed that up. Just a little real quick stitch in there just to kind of hold that together so whatever I put in here doesn't fall down in between the lining and the bag. One thing, um, my personal opinion, I think this might work out better as a wristlet as opposed to uh, putting a, a strap on it. Uh, I'm not in love with these little 
loops here on the end. I'll probably take uh, cut those off. But any future ones that I make, I'll probably put the wristlet uh, handle on there. Uh, two things I want to I want to say. This one, the first one that I made yesterday, that um, I screwed the zipper up on. I used quilt batting. This one that we've done together today, I used felt uh, instead of batting. They feel relatively identical as far as thickness, um, sturdiness. You know, there's a lot of fabric in here along with the felt and the batting and everything like that, so it's real substantial. I think either one will work out just fine. Um, totally up to you, whatever you want to use. The pattern and the instructions do call for batting, but I think it worked out just fine with the felt. Um, make sure that uh, you go to Etsy, check out Disorderly Threads. That's where the pattern came from. This, uh, came for this. Four fifty. You'll get a cute little bag. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Uh, if you made one along with me, let me know how it turned out. If you kind of watch to see if it's something that you think that you can make, let me know. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you make one and how it turns out. Hopefully the video was set up such that um, as we did a step, you could pause the video and you could go do the step and then come back and we can we kind of walked through it all together. I've got a couple of more projects that I'm going to be um, doing videos for. I'm going to try to set them up just the exact same way so that we can kind of do them together. I hope that you enjoy that. Please let me know. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll be notified whenever we do upload new content. content. We've had our channel for a little over a year and we got a little bit lazy and haven't put a whole lot on it recently. Um, Pops has retired back uh, a few months ago so he is putting a lot more content on the channel. Um, that's something that you need to make sure and check out because he is very handy and crafty um, in his workshop so we're going to have a lot more things put up um, for you to, to look at and enjoy. So I hope you had fun. I've enjoyed doing this. I've got more in the works and I will talk to you later.